Hi everyone, I'm Karen Dubs with Flexible Warrior Yoga Health and Wellness. Today we are going to do a segment of foam rolling, myofascial release using these fabulous myofascial release balls. And as well as that, in addition to that, we're going to be incorporating some stretches. So um, I'm a big fan of this high density foam roller and these myofascial release balls that are really inexpensive. Yes, you can use tennis balls. Yes, you can use lacrosse balls, but I'm not a big fan of either one of those. These are really inexpensive. In fact, I'll put links to both of them in the notes um, for this video so you can check out the links for that. Um, so most of us, we train really hard. We're all about strength and speed and power and agility, but a lot of times we don't take enough time to stretch, recover, and practice the self-massage technique. So, carve out a little time and join me. Um, we're gonna start with three deep breaths. So I would encourage you, you don't have to have a yoga mat for this, don't use that as an excuse, but if you, if you have one, roll your mat out, um, put your hands on your foam roller, sit your hips back onto your heels, drop your forehead down. This is a great stretch for your chest as well. So take three deep breaths in and out through your nose. And just try to take a second to just relax and settle in and set the intention to carve out these next few minutes for self-care. So one more deep breath and try to really fill up the back of your body with your inhale. And as you exhale, soft intention, roll the roller a little bit further away from you. See if you can drop your head all the way down to your mat. And then shift your weight forward. We're going to start with just a, a quick spinal stretch first. So you're going to come all the way down into your belly. Your roller's going to be arm's length away. Um, let it be right underneath your wrist so that your hands are right over the top of the roller. Point your toes. Squeeze your kneecaps up. Slide the roller back and open your chest and your heart, reaching from your toes up and out through the heart, sliding your shoulders away from your ears. Take a deep breath. And then roll back out of it, dropping your chest and chin all the way down, forehead to the mat. Take an inhale. Exhale, pull your shoulder blades back. Slide the roller towards you. Reach through your toes. Lift through your heart. Pull your shoulders away from your ears. And then roll back out of it, all the way down, chest and chin to the mat. And one more time. Inhale. Exhale, retract the shoulder blades back. Engage the lats. Roll all the way up. Lift through your heart. Pull your shoulders down. So what I mean by that is don't let the shoulders shrug up to the ears. Pull them away from your ears and pull your shoulder blades together. And then release all the way down. And then hands under your shoulders, come up to hands and knees. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit of a different interval training, different from the intervals that you're used to doing. You can come all the way down so that the roller is on your quads and on your forearms. So you're gonna roll kind of towards your hips and then towards your kneecap. So you don't wanna roll on the kneecap, just on the fleshy part of the leg. Straight forward and back. Now you can do this up on your hands too, if you want to, get a little back bend. So I like to come from the forearms into a back bend, or you can just stay on your forearms, just driving forward and back. So from here, what I want you to try to do is stir the toes. So as you rotate the toes out and then stir them in, you're gonna be getting different parts of the quadricep. Okay, so turn the toes in, maybe as you drive forward and out as you drive back. That's, that way you'll get, you know, different heads of the quad. And you'll feel that as you roll forward and back. You can also try bending the knees which exposes the quad a little bit more. Make sure that you're drawing your belly button in, so no slumping through the upper body. And we're just trying to get some circulation and blood flow. Let's do it two or three more times. So inhale as you draw forward, and about a minute on each body part is great, but certainly do more if you feel like that's what your body needs. Let's do one more. Okay, so now that you've created a little circulation in the quads, you can go ahead and come off of the roller and just scooch it to your side. Come all the way down onto your belly. Bring your left arm out in front of you. Reach back and grab the top of your right foot with your right hand. Now, if you can't grab onto your foot, you can use a stretch strap if you need to. Forehead can rest down onto the hand, and then you kick your foot gently into your hand, press your hips into the mat, squeeze your glutes, get that nice quad stretch. Let's take three breaths there. So really feel the belly expand into the mat or the floor beneath you as you breathe in and out. That feedback will really train you to take belly breaths. So one more breath. 
Go ahead and release that foot and switch sides. So grabbing onto the opposite foot, you may notice one quad is a little tighter than the other, that's all good, just notice it. So you want to engage your glutes, squeeze your glutes, press your hip bones into the mat, and then just gently kick the top of your foot into your hand. Your forehead can just be resting down onto your, the back of your hand. One more breath. Again, really try to breathe into the belly, feel it expand into the floor beneath you. And release. Hands under the shoulders. You can come into a little back bend, take a nice deep breath, and then sit yourself back to child's pose. Now from there, we're going to come into IT band, everybody's favorite. So you want to bring the foam roller parallel to your mat. You're going to bring one foot out the front, other foot straight out beside you. I like to do it this way because if you kick this foot into the floor beneath you a little bit, it gives you a little less resistance. You can modify depending on how much resistance you want. So you're going to drag forward and back. So what you want to do is think of the outside, like um, the pants seam, like the outside, just from the hip bone down to the outside of your knee, okay? IT band. Now, if you do a lot of mileage, a lot of running, you're probably a little sore and tender here. And again, just about a minute is about all you need to do. You can certainly do a little bit more than that. So what I love to do is intervals. So you foam roll, loosen up the tissue, and after that, you do some stretches. So this is definitely that hurt so good sensation, right? Now if you do want a little bit more, if you're really practicing this and you're not too sore, you can certainly stack your feet on top of each other. I'm not gonna do this right now because I am really sore, but you would drag all the way forward and back with that top leg um, on top of the other. It gives you a little bit more weight and a lot more sensation. Let's just put it that way. Okay, go ahead and come off of that and we're gonna switch and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna spin around so I don't turn my back to you, but um, you can just certainly spin and go the other way. Prop yourself up. Again, good form. So even though we're stretching, we want the chest open, not slumping, you know, all of that. So belly in, chest open, and then drag it forward and back. Again, think of the seam on the outside of your, maybe pants, you know. Ideally, I think that using compression here is really best when you're doing foam rolling. Um, tighter fitting clothes so they don't get in the way and compression so that it helps to squeeze and create that blood flow that you're looking for to help with your recovery. So make sure you're drinking lots of water throughout your sessions as you foam roll. Just like when you get a deep tissue massage and they tell you to drink a lot of water, that helps to flush out the toxins and the lactic acid and it helps with blood flow and recovery. Okay, so let's do one or two more here. Don't forget you certainly have the option of stacking your feet, <laughs> one on top of each other. If you want a, a little bit more resistance, again, I am really sore today, so I'm not going to take that option, but you are more than welcome to try. All right, so let's go ahead and come off of the roller. We got that tough one out of the way. You can move your roller off of your mat and lie down on your back and do an IT band stretch while that tissue is nice and warm. So from where you are, you put your left foot on the mat and your right leg straight up. And then I want you to take your left hand to the outside of your right um, calf and internally rotate your knee. So you're just spinning your kneecap in kind of towards your left shoulder, okay? And then from there, nice deep breath, now less is more, so you don't have to go deep with this, but drag your right foot towards your left hip bone and up towards your left shoulder, and breathe. So don't rock to the side, okay? It's not, it's not rocking to the side here. You're keeping your sacrum level, okay? So drop that right hip, internally rotate the, the knee, and draw the foot over and across. Breathing in and out from your nose, one more breath. And then go ahead and release, and we'll get the same thing on the other side. So left leg goes straight up. You're going to take your right hand on the outside of your left calf. Internally rotate that knee, so you're just pivoting the knee in towards your belly button or towards your right shoulder. And then go ahead and drag it over and up towards your right shoulder. Again, keeping your sacrum and your hips level. Deep breaths in and out through your nose. Remember with stretching, less is definitely more. So if you overstretch, 
your body will kick in a resistance and will fight you and you're actually gonna get less out of it. So relax and do a little bit less, it's okay. Take one more breath and then go ahead and release out of that. Pull your knees to your chest, you can rock yourself up. And from there, we are going to get to groin inner thighs. So we're kind of working around the leg. So opposing from the IT bands um, is groin inner thigh. So this one's a little bit trickier to get into. So here's how it looks. Um, you want your, uh, your foam roller over to the side, like right beside you. You're gonna lower yourself down and prop your knee up on the roller, just like that. And then you roll in towards the groin and out. All right, <laughs> again, it looks a little funny, but you will know when you get it right. Um, groin inner thigh is such a crucial area. We kind of ignore this one a lot. It's all about the hamstrings, the quads, and the IT bands. But groin inner thigh is equally as important to um, get the stretching and flexibility in. You're getting a little stretch as you roll it out and in too. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, can I see you roll out and in. Okay, so again, just about a minute. And just really work that out in a nice and slow. Go as far as you can to get that good stretch. And let's do it one more time. All right, excellent. Go ahead and come off of that. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So I like to prop my knee up, down on the mat behind me, and then just drop the knee over to the side. Forearms down, again, roll it out and in, or in and out, however you want to think of it. Again, these high, density foam rollers. I really prefer, this is my favorite one. Um, and the foam rollers, a lot of times, everybody has one, or most people have one, but they don't use them as often as they should. So that was my inspiration to film this for you guys today. All right, let's do a couple more here, really open up that tissue, and notice where you're really feeling it. Like, if you're really feeling this, because you don't do this very often, then you might want to come back to this a little bit more, spend a little bit more time there. Okay, last one. Excellent. All right, go ahead and come off of the roller. So move your roller out of the way. You can lie back down onto your back. Take some water in. Okay, so let's all just do that together. Drink some water because, again, hydration is huge for your recovery. You want to increase blood flow and flush out all the toxins. Okay, lie down on your back. We're going to do a groin inner thigh stretch. So knees are going to come into your chest. We're going to do recline butterfly. So you can open your knees out to the side, grab, on, grab onto the outside of the ankles, bottoms of the feet together. And you are welcome to stay right here with this uh, recline butterfly variation. Also, one that I really like is um, a straddle stretch in a recline position because it's really much nicer for your back. So legs will go straight up first and then out to the side. You're just going to grab on right inside the knees. You can slide your hands up towards your um, thighs, and then a little bit of a rock from right to left just helps to gently open. Again, no forcing. All right, three deep breaths here. Close your eyes and just really try to relax into the stretch. Deep breaths in and out through your nose. And then go ahead and bend the knees, bring the legs all the way back together, and rock yourself back up. Okay, so from there, the next thing is what people really love to do, mostly glutes and hamstrings. So um, go ahead and prop yourself up on top of your roller. You're gonna keep your right foot down on the floor and the left ankle is gonna cross over. So what I like to do is bring the right hand across the left knee and lean to the side and then just roll around that piriformis and hip. So I like to make circles with it. You can also go cross fiber like this, back and forth. And there is no right, no wrong. So, you know, a lot of times people want to know, you know, exactly something. But the truth is, as long as it feels good for you, you are doing it right. That's my, that's my rule of thumb. And the flexibility is just as important as everything else you do. That's why I always say flexibility is power. Uh, that's on my shirt, right? <laughs> That was just, it comes out of my mouth all the time. So flexibility is power because when you practice self-care, when you practice flexibility, when you really focus on good recovery, that's when you get stronger. So um, putting this attention on your self-care and your recovery is huge, good for you for carving out the time to do it.
Okay, one more time here. Again, just rock and roll around, and then go ahead and release that, and let's get the same thing on the other side. So right ankle lower left knee, left hand across right knee, roll towards your right knee, and then roll it around. Now again, just like I said earlier when we were on IT band or maybe quads, um, you might notice one hip is tighter than the other. And that is really sort of normal. There's a lot of imbalance that goes on. What's important is that you notice it, okay? And you really just acknowledge, oh, you need to pay a little bit more attention maybe to your form um, or to your flexibility and your recovery practice. Okay, a couple more rolls around here. Again, feel free to um, experiment, go cross fiber, go around in circles. If you do happen to find a knot, then spend a little bit more time on that area. All right, one more second here. Again, it's that hurt so good <laughs> sensation. All right, go ahead and come off. Let's do a reclined hip stretch. So move your roller out of the way, roll back down onto your back. It's really, really great to do these intervals, right? So you roll it out and then you stretch. So go ahead and lie all the way down into your back. Let's cross the left, left ankle over the right knee for reclined pigeon. And then pull your um, right foot a little bit closer to your face. You can slide your hands underneath your right thigh if you'd like to. Just um, notice for a second what you're doing with your chin though. So if your chin is jutting up towards the sky, you want to gently just draw your chin towards your chest. Use the strength of your right leg to push gently into your left ankle and then gently press your left ankle back into your right leg. Good, let's take two more breaths here. Deep breaths in and out through the nose. And go ahead and release out of that. Knees to chest, let's get the same thing on the other side. So right ankle over left knee. Externally rotate that knee out to the side. So the more that you press that ankle into your thigh, the more the knee will externally rotate. Hands can come under the thigh if you like. Again, just notice your chin. And you want to gently draw your chin towards your chest so the back of your neck stays long and your cervical spine stays neutral. And of course you're breathing in and out through your nose. Not forcing, not pushing, not judging, but just being present and trying to do the best you can with the stretch right here, right now. One more breath. And exhale. Go ahead and unfold yourself, pull your knees to your chest. You can rock and roll yourself back up. And we are going to do our hamstrings. So go ahead and grab your roller. Sit up on top of it again. And bring your legs out in front. So you're right behind your sacrum tailbone and you just roll back and forth. If you're doing anything in your foam roll, you're probably doing this. What I like to do is, just like we did with the quads, you turn your pinky toes out, right? So you're getting the outside part of your hamstring, and then internally rotate towards the big toe side. Okay, so you spin out and in. So you just roll around, like, get a little bit of motion. Don't just go forward and back, right? Because that's only hitting the central part of your hamstring. You want to get all the different parts of your hamstring. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Create circulation, move around. If you want a little bit more sensation, put more weight into just one leg. So fold your right foot over your left, okay? And same thing, like swirl it in and out, okay? Notice where the knots are. Hang out there a little bit more and just rock and roll on that. Make sure if you're doing that one leg, of course, you get the other side. Spin it around. Excellent, yes. Oh, that feels so good. Again, if you're really feeling this a lot, spend a little bit more time here. About a minute on each body part is great because we only have so much time. So I was going to try to keep this under a half an hour for you guys because I know you're in a hurry. Um, go ahead and lie down. Lots to do, right? Okay, so from this re recline position, left foot on the floor, right leg straight up, easy hamstring stretch. No forcing, no judging. Again, tailbone anchored down. So lifting your tailbone up, you're not getting any further, right? In fact, you're reducing your range of motion here. So drop your tailbone down, hands underneath the thigh, and just gently pull the right thigh in towards your face and breathe. So much healthy recovery happening right here, right now. Take one more breath, and then go ahead and release that knee down, and let's switch to the same thing, left leg straight up, hands underneath your thigh, 
Relax your shoulders, relax your jaw, relax your forehead. No forcing here, just breathe and stretch. And listen, the time that you're investing here with this recovery is huge, right? So huge. I have so many DVDs, um, videos on YouTube, lots of opportunities to practice a little bit more self-care and recovery. Most segments are just 10 minutes. This one, again, I wanted to keep it under 30 minutes for you because I wanted you to get a little bit longer recovery session. Take one more nice deep breath here. And then go ahead and pull that knee into your chest. Hug your thighs to your ribcage and rock yourself back up or just push yourself back up. Okay, very good. So we got the whole way around the upper part of the leg, which is the area that most people are most concerned about. Um, we also want to do the calves, right? So we don't want to skip that. So two different things, and I have a couple other videos with um, these myofascial release balls. So check out my other videos too. But I do love to use these for calves, and, and there's two different ways to do this. So I'll show it with the foam roller, and I'll show it with these myofascial release balls. So um, you tuck the ball kind of right behind the hamstring, right above the calf. You sit back just gently, doesn't take much. You come off of it, you move it a little bit, and you sit back again. It's nice if you use one ball under each leg, you know, so you can do both together. And this is um, hitting different trigger points through the calf, which is so nice. Again, you don't want to go too forcefully with this. Um, you don't want to bruise yourself, right? Just very gentle hitting those trigger points. These are great. Um, we're going to hit the feet quick with these myofascial release balls too. Okay, so that's one way to use them for your calves. You can also uh, put the ball right underneath the calf, just out in front of you. You can put it up on a yoga back block too, that works too. So let me demo that um, for you. So up on a yoga block, if you want it a little bit higher, prop it on there. And uh, roll around a little bit this way. So again, that hits just different parts of the calf and really triggers, um, targets little areas. Okay, so roll around like that. Obviously do that on both sides. Um, I want to show you the feet quick, so excuse me, you're not going to see my face for a second, but follow along. So the ball goes underneath the foot, and what can you see? Here we go. Um, and then you just give your feet a little massage. I like to start really light like this, just getting circulation. And then as your foot starts to warm up, you can lean in, on and off of the ball. So shifting your body weight on and off of the ball to massage out those feet. Because once the feet start to go, right, and you get plantar fasciitis or, you know, other issues with your feet, um, it affects everything else in your body. So that's why the self-care of the feet are so important. Make sure, obviously, you get both sides. Now, you can do this sitting in a chair, too, like when you're watching TV or something. Just roll around your foot. Um, you know, while you're watching one of your favorite TV shows. That's all good. Okay, and then lastly, I just wanted to show you similar using the foam roller. So, doing the calves, this is the way I like to do it. I like uh, one foot out in front, or behind the foam roller, I should say, and then the calf out in front, and then you just roll like this. Now, again, just like on the hamstrings, if you want more sensation, um, I like to say sensation <laughs> over, you know, it's kind of excruciating, right? We don't want to say that, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so if you want that more sensation, you put more body weight into the calf, okay? By folding the leg over. Again, don't slump with your posture, really push with your hands. And remember, you have different parts of your, your um, calf muscles, so you just don't want to go straight forward and back. You want to internally rotate and then externally rotate, okay? These are really tender on me today. I don't know how yours are feeling. Again, if you don't want as much pressure, just do both calves at the same time. So a lot of people don't really like that because it puts so much pressure in the shoulders. That's why I wanted to give you the option of using these myofascial release balls as well. All right, let's stretch out our calves. One of my favorite and the pose that you should do pretty much every day. After every run, after every sports practice, downward dog. <laughs> so from child's pose, go ahead and shift your weight forward, curl your toes, push back. I like to bend the left knee, drop the right heel, because that really just 
allows you to send that energy down the back of the leg and really get the heel closer to the mat. Now, if your calves and hamstrings are really tight, your heel might not touch down, but you're getting the stretch, and that's what matters. Go ahead and switch sides, bend the right knee, drop the left heel down, and then again, you can um, take your right foot, cross it behind your left ankle, and we're breathing, of course, right? So continue to just pedal out right and left a few times. We're just gonna finish with a little half vinyasa flow here. So from downward facing dog, draw to plank pose, take a nice deep breath, level everything out, your shoulders are square, bend your elbows, lower down to the mat, inhale into a back bend, take a nice deep breath, and then exhale, curl your toes under, lift back into downward facing dog. And go ahead and release your knees. Okay, I hope you stuck with me. I am so proud of you for carving out this time to practice self-care and recovery. Again, drink a full liter, a couple cups of water, like three, four cups of water would be amazing. Flush your body. Um, you can check the notes of this video for your foam roller. If you already have a foam roller, bust it out and use it. And if you want these myofascial release balls, again, the link is in the description of the video. And one more thing that I just wanted to mention, a product that I really love, essential oils are amazing for athletes. I love this doTERRA product. It's called Deep Blue, and it comes in an athlete's kit with essential oils that are amazing to incorporate into your training and to support your recovery. So that is something to try, and I'll put a link for this as well in the notes of the video. Okay, I take your requests. Feel free to comment below. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Comment if you um, have a specific video that you'd like me to film, I'm happy to do that. And of course, subscribe to my channel. And if you want more information, you can check out my website at flexiblewarrior.com. All right, awesome job, you guys. Stay flexible, warriors. Namaste. Bye.